together anymore. They've been married. Were they were they married at the for time? Uh, at the time they were. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a very. It was a strange marriage. They were together, but never any love in that marriage. It's kind of a, a sad situation. A business proposal. Sure. So what did your what did your father do for a living? He uh, he worked for commercial refrigeration. Okay. So fixing ice machines and you know, giant warehouses. And what about your mom? Mom was a legal secretary for the state. Your mom was a legal secretary. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is 2001 we're getting to now. You're in right. high school. You're a junior, senior? Junior. You're a junior. Mm-hmm. At what's the high school? High school is Santana. All right, Santana High. And, I mean, look, it's, yes, this is crazy. There have already been so many school shootings prior to this. So the questions I sort of want to know are, did you, did were there rumors of this coming? Were there anything anyone sort of knew and didn't take uh, seriously that they should have, you know, that sort of thing, because, you know, all these things happen. Yeah, there were so like, many of them. There was actually, well, you got to remember 2001. This is the first major school shooting coming after Columbine. So I don't remember hearing much about school shootings until up till Columbine. Oh, then right? I'm wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Because 2001 was the, so the second one then? In my opinion, before oh. the Monday shooter and a few that you had in the 70s and 80s, but but to me it was Columbine and then things kind of snowballed Crazy from there. After. From okay. what I've been, right. from what I'm I've seen. I'm sorry then. I, didn't, I so, thought this was later. No, so it was just, this was maybe, I mean, man, see, maybe that's what I'm saying. After? There's so many of them. I can't, I don't yeah. even remember when or anything. The Sandy Hook, all, like, good Lord. Yeah. Right, but it, so and it was also interesting because so there was there was Columbine and then we were about a year later Santana school shooting and then a couple miles down the road at kind of a rival high school there was another school shooting two weeks later, so it all happened in this little town and just as I said to you there were some white supremacy rumors and they just exploded, but you know the media on that knowing that oh two school shootings within a month plus white supremacy plus white supremacy town, yeah and yeah. so left over to today Santee gets a real bad rap, especially in the San Diego area. People know or, or assume it's bad from it's still stemming from, you know, what took place back then. And this. Yeah. So this was, the I would say, the first major school shooting after Columbine. OK, so what were there any rumors or anything that was floating around? Yeah, it's funny because the rumors always start to come afterwards. Right. People are like, oh, well, so and so said this mm, was going to happen. Yeah, Nobody yeah. reported it. And so, yeah, there were definitely rumors. And I can remember a specific entrance with uh, there was a lot of fights happening at the school at that time. Kids, I don't know, they're just angry. And I, to me, that was just happening at every high school. But apparently, for whatever reason, everybody was fighting at this, this particular month, a couple months leading up to the school shooting. And I remember my dad saying, he's like, man, what's there going to be a school shooting or something? He said that? Yeah, just joking around. A couple months later, you know, it happened. Can I'll you, never forget that. Can you walk us through that day? Like, the yeah. moment you get up in the morning, walk me through the whole fucking well, day. Well, just like they say, it was, I remember it was sunny. It was a morning just like any other morning. What just day like of the they week? always say. <sighs> I don't remember. Wow. I couldn't tell okay. you. Yeah. I just know it was 2001. I remember I had a counselor's appointment earlier that day. So I had to go into the counselor's office, and my grades were always awful so it was like hey the type of meeting where you're like hey pick it up or you know like you're do you be remember out here. does that day more detailed in your life than maybe anything else like do you remember what you ate for breakfast do you remember what you no. how you got to school that morning and you say you got there earlier because you had this appointment other than that no i just okay. remember kind of like i guess highlights i don't know what you would call them uh bits and I pieces like that come back to me yeah i guess and now so one thing i wanted to say before we get too far is that there were rumors uh that this was going to happen. apparently this kid told people he was going to do it the day before and the friends and even a grown-up at the time he told it to his friends and to the grown-up never reported it so they got driven out of town after that really they were yeah lynch mobbed out of there because people were pissed what do you mean this kid told you he was right. going to do it and you being an adult you just sat on it and one of those kids that he told, like, I think there's a group of like four or five that he was hanging out and he told I was going to do this, went to the high school we were talking about. It was called Granite Hills, a rival high school. So he, and that's when the school shooting took place. So that kid was in two school shootings within a month. No. Yeah, I got driven out of Santee, oh pushed over to this school. <laughs> yeah, it's like, bro, I, I want nothing to do with you. Holy shit. <laughs> you talk about born yeah. under a bad yeah. side. Holy fuck. <laughs> two school shootings in two weeks. Right, dude. He holds the record. <laughs> Demi, there's no way. <laughs> That's terrible. Ugh. Holy <laughs> fuck yeah. 
Yeah. You're not even processed the first no. fucking trauma. No. Of the, you're not even like, what? It's happening again. Like, <laughs> but you had to think, like, he had to have known when they started hearing that pop, pop, pop. He's like, oh, I know where this is going. You know what I mean? He, by then he was a veteran. Yeah. yeah he knew how to yeah, take yeah, it, knew how to handle it. But from what I heard, he got a bunch, and, and this was all speculative, but I heard he got a bunch of crap pushed over to that high school, and you know, people were teasing him, hey, don't bring your hate crimes over here to our school. And, uh, and it, I guess, in a way, it followed him. Fuck. All right, so tell me what All happened right. that day. So this was, okay, I remember we had, for, we had a, like a block system and you would have your first class. And after that class, you would have a break in between your next class. It was like a, not lunch, but a 20 minute break before that. But where would you go? The cafeteria, outside? There was, uh, I our campus was outside. Yeah. yeah, so we had two big quads, which were grass areas, giant grass areas. Uh, and the big quad is where most people hung out. And I would say, I guess the jocks, you know, more of the more popular kids were in that area. And then you go to the small quad, had two hallways that would lead into the small grass quad. And that was more of your artsy area, punks, rockers, stuff like that. And I was in the, in the main quad. And like I said, there's two hallways that lead in and out of the quads. The only two ways you can get from one way. And the classrooms lie in all of that. And what happened was I was at the very south side of the north quad and the bell rings. So the break time's over. We just, everybody was hanging out. What time of day is this? Would this would say? have been probably 9.30. I think that's what it was, it took about, it was about 9.30. The bell rings, we have a three bell system. First bell means get to class, breaks over. Second bell means you've got a minute left. Uh, if you don't make it within that minute, then you gotta go to something called lockout, which is where you don't get attendance for the day and you've gotta sit in a room by yourself. Which, it was a, looking back on it, what was that doing to anybody, to the kids? That, that's, I wanted that. The first bell rang and I, for whatever reason that day, I said, you know, I thought, I remember thinking to myself, I don't, I just don't wanna go. I don't wanna go to class today. And the shooting actually took place at the end of the hallway that I had to walk through to get to my class, right? There was a bathroom, it emptied out into a bathroom, and that's where the shooting took place. The shooter was standing in front of the bathroom because he was using it as coverage. So he'd go in there, reload, come back out. Reload. So, right, he reloaded. He had a revolver, 22. I was going to say, I watched your hand motion do this, so he had a revolver. He had a revolver, yeah. I remember, I'm right here. I mean, I was right there for everything. Second bell rings means you've got like a minute or two minutes to get to class and it's still, I'm going, ah, I just, I don't want to go. Meanwhile, I normally would have left after that second bell, would have put me right in front of the bathroom where the school, cause I had to go right past there to get to my class. So it would have put me face to face with the shooter had I gone when I normally did, but for whatever reason, not today, I don't, I'm just not feeling it. And I'd say a couple seconds after that second bell rang, I slowly started to make my way down the hallway where the shooting, cause the shooting took place in the hallway with a friend, my childhood friend, John, that I grew up with, we were kind of slacking off that day and we started making our way down the hall, slowly. Can you describe the hall? Is it locker lined? It's uh, yeah, it... locker lined hallway. Okay. Uh, and it was like herding cattle in between classes. How wide would you say? Like 20 feet? Yeah, this is 20 10 feet. by 10. Yeah, so probably maybe... about not much bigger than this. Okay. So maybe 15, 20 and feet. And you're shoving how many kids pouring through this? Especially thing. those last minute loser kids that don't want to go to class. We're all scrambling because we, you know, you don't get attendance for the day. So it was really like herding cattle. And this kid knew that, that's the problem. That's what was scary is that he picked that place because he knew he was gonna pick people off. It'd be super easy, he wouldn't have to aim. As, as the second bell rings, I wait a couple minutes. I start to make my way to the hallway with my friend, John. All of a sudden I see everybody running out of the hallway, opposite direction of which I wanna go in, right? And they all had that, and normally when that happens, it means there's a fight. So as a 17 year old boy, I mean, we wanted to go watch. We ran to the crowd, oh, shit. opposite okay. direction. But it didn't make sense to me They're at the time. They're not screaming? Or... No, I remember this one tall blonde chick, for some reason, I, I'll never forget, she had this look on her face. I can't describe other than just absolute terror. And no one yelled run no. or anything? Nobody knew what was going on. They just so I, mob mentality, right. everyone's going this way, we go this way. No, we went the opposite. No, I, I mean see, them, all yeah, of them correct. are going. And you guys are going to go fucking upstream. Because we thought everybody right, was fighting. But it didn't make sense. Why is everybody walking away from a fight? Normally everybody gravitates towards it. So it wasn't processing. And I didn't hear that sh the first few rounds. So I didn't know what was going on until I came in the hallway. Then I looked down at the end of the hallway. There's a kid holding his stomach laying on the ground. Right. So this was right in front of the bathroom where the guy was shooting. Everybody was exiting the hallway. I was coming into the hallway to see what was going on, thinking it was a fight. I thought, wow, this guy got stabbed? That's insane. It was just a fist fight. This guy got stabbed. The shooter comes back out of the bathroom. I guess he had gone in to reload. 
and that's when he shot into the hallway that I was standing in. And there was a soda machine at the end of the hallway where, uh, where I was standing. Me and my friend were right there. The first shot when he came back after reloaded was so loud in that hallway. Because gun loud, you know, gunshots are loud. Listen, that's personally. what I say this all the time. People with the I would, I would, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. Listen, if you're in a small ass fucking hallway in your home and you got to defend yourself, fuck yeah. If you've got a gun, man, take that motherfucker out. But just know that there's gunpowder that burns your eyes. Yeah. The gun kicks. It's loud as fuck. Your your ears are gonna ring. Your eyes might burn. That's like exactly you got what a shot, uh -huh. literally, hopefully, to get one if you're in a space like that. And I don't think a lot of people think that. They think they can just come in and fuck a guy, 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 and it's not does not work that way. No. Can I ask you this real quick? Yeah, Do yeah. you know the shooter? Did you know who he was? Uh, we hung in. Not really. No classes Not with really. this kid I, or anything? No, but I knew kids that hung out with him, this burnout group. Was he, he was a hanging senior? Out with. No, a he junior. was a freshman. Whoa, he's a freshman. Yeah, this little punk freshman, man, that was trying to be cool. I'll get into that in a second. Yeah. Uh, trying to impress his friends is what it turned out to be. It wasn't a bully situation. It was him trying to be cool to fit in with the older burnouts. And so they, let me ask you this. Do you, when a bullet goes by you like uh -huh. that, do you hear it? I don't I mean, I don't it, mean no. what you hit. I mean, is, do you get that? Do you get no, any what, of that? So what ha I hung out to the gro the the uh, soda machine. The first first bullet, I went to my knees for whatever reason. You got to remember, the shooter was like 300 feet away. There's no charging him to stop it. You know, they, there's no. I had, the only thing I could do was run away from the bullet. So I just want to make that clear. I dropped to my knee for some reason. I guess it was that loud. I don't know if I was if I turned to run and I tripped or something. But my hand was against the soda machine. And as I put my hand on the soda machine, the shooter, I don't think he was aiming for me, but you know, sometimes I think he was. He shot the soda machine that I was holding like, my hand against. And I know it, not only did I hear it, but the, the soda machine was never replaced. It was there when we came back on the campus. Uh -uh. So you go back and you realize, <laughs> you go back. <laughs> hey, uh, E6 yeah. was unavailable, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, months later? Somebody couldn't <laughs> donate a soda machine. Sure. That's a horrible reminder every day. God damn. It's so insensitive. The best they did was a couple months later, they did a sloppy paint over job of where the bullet hit. So the mark and the indent was right there. And what I'm saying is I know it hit them soda machines. Not only did I hear it, but you could see the indent that it hit where it went through the metal and bent the cage. You know, the, so, sorry, the soda machine had a cage around it and it busted that all up. Got it. That was not so fixed. So how we close back. to your hand would you say that bullet? I mean, within Inches. a within a foot. And a God. Half. But he shot again, and that hit the stucco that the that the soda machine was butted up against okay. the stucco wall. When you hit that stucco wall, that stucco blows back into your face. So that blinded, you know, me for a second. Because it, it, the blowback was so intense. And at this point where you are, how many people would you say? I know, I know, yeah. you probably don't know the answer to my questions. Because, but what, a handful of people back there, like yeah. trying to get out. So, did the the first wave of people are already out now? Yeah. Okay. First wave are out. And remember, I came in after that right. first You're wave because I didn't hear way. it, and yeah. we thought there was a fight. The, I forgot to mention the kid laying on the ground with his stomach. I thought he had gotten stabbed. Right. The shooter went in there, reloaded, comes back out, and that's when I make my entrance into the hall. As soon as he comes back out, he shoots again. I see the guy who fell on the ground holding his stomach. He got up and ran. He got and, away. Yeah, and at that point, I knew I knew something was up. I still hadn't processed that it was a gun. Still hadn't processed that I'm being shot at or people around us are being shot at. Uh, so that's when, yeah, he reloaded, came out. He shot the soda machine. Then he shot the wall against me. And my buddy I was telling you I was with, his hands were all cut up and bleeding from the stucco on the wall. At that time, I remember turning turning around after seeing this guy uh come out of the hallway he was just and not aiming by the way just picking people off there i don't think he was aiming for anybody specifically or targeting anybody at that time i just turned around and ran and i'll never forget there was a there was a special needs guy next to me i remember thinking you know should i carry him but he was running just as fast as i was so <laughs> we just, yeah, i was like oh he's good he's like fuck <laughs> yeah <off. laughs> I'll never forget, man. The coolest kid. His name was Robert. We had Good PE together. Him. But the uh, the thing that... <laughs> yeah, man. He, but, He's like, you don't need to help me yeah. at all, man. I gave him that look because, you know, you're, you're like, what's the right... <laughs> But the, the thing that's it's still, nice you to even consider wanting to help someone else in that situation. Yeah, I didn't, but you know, I thought you didn't about need it. To, so, though. yeah, you sure, didn't, I didn't. He was, he like, was get, hauling you ass. Get out man. of my yeah, way, you motherfucker. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that part, actually. Yeah. 
Athletic Greens, the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really simple. I've been taking Athletic Greens. I take it every morning. We have them here at the studio as well. Look, I don't always eat well. I eat late. I eat garbage. I eat fast food. And I need to get the nutrients that I need. So I take the Athletic Greens. I got the powder. I put it in a little uh, water bottle with me. I take it where I walk. I take it when I'm going to the gym. And I love it. It starts my day off right. I know I'm getting the nutrients I need. And it's delicious. All right. So with so many stressors in life, it's difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our bodies the nutrients it needs to thrive. AG1 by Athletic Greens is the category-leading superfood product that brings comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everybody. To help each of us be at our best, they simplify the path to better nutrition by giving you the one thing with all the best things. One tasty scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more in one convenient daily serving. The special blend of high-quality bioavailable ingredients in a scoop of AG1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, support energy and focus, aid with gut health and digestion, and support a healthy immune system, effectively replacing multiple products or pills with one healthy, delicious drink. Join the movement of athletes, moms, dads, rookies, first-timers, and everyone in between. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash honeydew today. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash honeydew to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. The holidays are right around the corner. If you want help prepping for your parties and family get-togethers, all while supporting a more sustainable local food system, check out Imperfect Foods. Imperfect Foods is a grocery delivery service offering an entire line of sustainable groceries that taste delicious and reduce waste. Plus, your order will arrive on the same day each week. On average, Imperfect Foods customers save six to eight pounds of food from lesser outcomes with every order. And unlike on-demand delivery companies, Imperfect delivers weekly by neighborhood, a unique model that produces 25 to 75% fewer emissions than individual trips to the grocery store. Plus, say goodbye to packaging guilt. Imperfect Foods is the only national grocery delivery company to make it easy to return your packaging after every order i've got a whole i've gotten two orders now of imperfect foods and it's fantastic i mean i've gotten eggs i had bacon what else i had vegetables we took it made uh stuffed peppers out of it it was delicious right now imperfect foods is offering my listeners 20 percent off your first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com and use promo code honeydew again 20 percent off your first four orders that's up to an 80 dollars value at imperfectfoods.com when you use the promo code HONEYDEW, imperfectfoods.com, and use code HONEYDEW. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients in a bioavailable form your body can actually use. What you won't find are sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, and artificial colorants. Plus, the fresh taste and delayed release capsule design make taking your vitamins easy. I'm a ritual taker. I ritually take ritual vitamins. Every day I take the multivitamin. It does have a clean, like minty, fresh taste. It's pretty interesting too. You look in the capsule, you can see everything that's going on in there. And um, I've been looking for a multivitamin uh, for a while now that wasn't, you know, full of garbage. And ritual is it. You'll always know what nutrients you're taking, where they come from, thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. Your multivitamins are delivered right to your door every month with free shipping always, and you can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order, okay? Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash honeydew to start your Ritual today. Now... Let's get back to the do. And so we ran together to the parking lot. We ran, so from the hallway, we ran through the big quad into the parking now lot. Now, at that point that you're running out, are you still hearing the pops? Yeah, Is that at that what you're point you're hearing, hearing but screams at that point, or people realize that I didn't hear any now? screams. No. Uh, I, one thing I do remember is thinking, I'm going to get shot in the back. Because we didn't know, I was thinking there was somebody on the roof along with him. Right, so you don't I know if you don't you're know right. it's just Good one point. shooter. Good point. So the whole time I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get shot in the back, running to the parking lot. That's what I thought was going to happen. 
Yeah, God, I, it's crazy. Even to think that maybe he is, maybe he's flushing you all out that way, and there's right. other people that way. Right, that yeah. goes through Holy your mind. Shit, at I'm the time. sure. Fuck. For some reason, I remember thinking an there was a guy. You That's know, what I Yeah. I thought, okay, there's a guy up on the roof, and he's gonna snipe me now. That's kind of what was going through my head. One thing I'll never forget: when they talk about heroes in a situation like that, we had these guys called narcs, which were just police on campus, right? They weren't cops, but they were there to break up fights and make sure everything went smoothly. Did they but carry weapons? Them marks. No, no. They were always normally big dudes. They knew how to handle themselves. I think they were going to be police officers eventually. They started there. This one guy, I'll never forget, he had these rad tattoos all the way down his arm, like a spiral. He was running towards the shooting. Everybody running away, but this guy running towards it, man. And you, I mean, you got to remember at this time what a hero really is. Everybody wants out of there, not him, man. He's going towards the face of danger. I'll never forget that, how brave you'd have to be to do something like that. Another one of the narcs, I didn't it's have funny, to see. It's funny, you guys went to thinking it was a fight, which is dumb. Yeah. This yeah, yeah. guy now's running because he knows what it is. Which yeah, is yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a fine yeah. line between dumb and brave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, okay. All right, so I have to ask, how many people did it had died? Did that guy um, that got shot in the stomach, do you know if I he never, died later? I don't think that was the kid that died. I don't think so. I never One found out who did. it was. The two, two, two died, 15 were shot altogether. God, two died. 15. Yeah, man. You got to remember, he was just picking people off right. in the hallway. It was There's no strategy behind it other than just fire and hit what you can. And the guy, it was, this was when new video cameras are still kind of new as far as portable cameras go. A, this, some techie kid had a camera on him no way. Hid in a classroom, which was overlooking the bathroom the guy was shooting at, filmed it. We never got the footage, by the way. The cops still have it. They never released it. Filmed the shooting. The shooter was smiling, laughing as he was pulling the trigger, Jesus killing kids in the hallway, smiling. Imagine that level of insanity. And well, I guess we'll get to this later. At but like this 14, dude, too. He's he was 14, I think. Yeah. yeah. He's trying to get out of jail right now. Wait, let's. And we'll, we'll get we're into that get in to a that. second. Yeah, All right. So you guys run out of this school, and you're yeah. in the where did you say the quad? You're back at the quad or the so park? So I ran like back where? into the large quad. Okay. Shooting took place in the small quad, uh, at the end of the hallway. I was on the opposite end of the hallway in the large quad. And are you worried that he's walking your way? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. you so think the whole time you're running, I think he's behind me or somebody's on the roof, ready. To so, as fast as you're running, you can't get far enough away fast enough. You have no idea what's God, around yeah, you. Yeah, a bullet can go for, yeah. And so then you think far. someone's gonna come up in front of me and they're gonna block me off here. Luckily, I was able to make it to the parking lot where most everybody, but you gotta remember, man, we're, we're kids at this time. Nobody knows what's going on. Right, and I'm sure the police, maybe if they've been called, it they just got called, they so they're been not there, there. Yeah, you're just a group of kids in a, and teachers probably, so, faculty in a parking lot. I got into my car in the parking lot and actually ask myself, do I need to go back to class? You're not processing sure. what's going on. You're like, oh, I, got, I guess I'll just wait for a second, then I'll go back to class. That's how, I mean, it just didn't process at that moment. Eventually everybody started, we got in our car and we just left. And I'll never remember driving home uh, on the main street that the, that the high school is on, a cop just flying past me in the opposite direction. That's when I knew, oh man, this is, this is real. And what happened, the way the guy, the kid got Fuck. caught, there was an off-duty officer on campus that day, just happened to be there. I guess after he had reloaded once or twice, the cop heard the commotion, 911 calls were already made. He went in there to kind of figure out what was going on and then call for backup. So if Did it they... wasn't for him, I, who knows how many more kids would have been shot right, or would yeah. have died. Did they kill him? Oh no, you said no. he's trying to get out of jail. All right, we'll come back no. to that, we'll come back to that. So, all right, you leave and then what? You go home? Where do you go? I went go? home. I'll never forget the message I left my mom at her work. I remember I go, hey, yeah. mom, uh, something happened at school, but I'm okay. And then I hung up. I didn't go in detail. Oh, and then, God. <laughs> and she later told me, she's like, what were you thinking, man? And she, because she, you know, it was all, it was world news at the time. The way I know it was world news is because not only was it on every station every night, but people from other countries were calling family members of mine, knowing that they lived in the area they had a nephew or a grandson or someone that lived in that area and from England or, you know, in Europe. And so they were getting all this as well. Damn. That's how, I mean, it was huge. That's why yeah. it blows my mind that nobody remembers it even, even now.
So, yeah, yeah like I said, I thought this was down the line of these school shootings. And it's uh, saying it's pretty much the second one in the U.S. I would US say it was probably the second one in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Heavily profiled. Yeah, and that's why I wonder, out of all the school shootings we have now, how many people are going to remember these, you know, 20 years from now? Because this was just as big. We didn't have social media at the time, right. but it was on every channel for weeks. CNN, that's all they cover every night. So who's the first person you actually get to talk to about it, like to unload on? You calling other friends at school? Are you checking on people? Like what's happening with That's that? That's right. What happened was after I had driven away, I went home, which wasn't very far. What happened, there's a strip mall across the street from the high school. I had a grocery store, like a Del Taco, Jack in the Box, things like, like that. It was pretty big, and everybody gathered there. So I got home, and we already it was already on the news by the time I had gotten home, and I was with one of my, my other friend had made his way, John, that was in the high school, with, uh, that was in the hallway with, made his way to my house. And we went back to the gathering place thinking that's where we needed to be because it was on the news, like, hey, all the kids are here, finding out everybody's okay, everybody's accounted for. So we went into that, and that's when everybody, the rumors started going around, hey, did you hear who it was? Hey, what did you hear? It was this, it was, it turned out it was this burner. I don't even want to say his name, some Good. burnout kid. Fuck him. I have no, I cannot stand this kid. The interesting part is that most school shooters killed themselves or before the shooting's over, from what I've seen, at least, right? This was one of the first ones where you could see the steps being taken to him going to prison. So he was arrested, he, he was detained, then he had his trial, then he has, a, you know, whatever, retrial, whatever, um, his appeal, and you get to kind of follow it all the way along, which also kind of sucks because it still comes back up. I gotta, I gotta hear about this guy wanting to get out into prison. Another thing, he wants to be a cop. Last I heard, what? <laughs> you don't, you can't be. No, you no, can't you, be. You don't commit a double homicide <laughs> yeah. and of, then of children, of, of children, yeah. right? And then get to be a cop. He, he doesn't he understand? He doesn't even. If he gets out, he's never allowed to have a weapon or anything. No, he's got felonies. Exactly, it's over. But also, keep that motherfucker in prison. Yeah, please. I mean, a school shooting should be. Life in prison, if not death. Man. You know, do us a favor and shoot yourself, motherfucker. Yeah. Please. I would love... Save just, one. No. Save one for yourself. Yeah, please. That's why I still, to this day, you know, like, why don't you take yourself out, man? Yeah. There's, I'm not going to shed a tear for you. I care. You almost shot me in the face. I mean, he came a foot and a half from shooting me in the face. And, you know, the older I get, the harder that is to deal with. When I was a kid, I just blew it off. But the more I do think you have about kids? it... I don't know. I bet you... I mean, look, I see shit that freaks me out, like, and I don't know if it's true. I know there's a lot of scare stuff out there, too, but, but like, there was an article that said something about don't send your kids to school in shoes that flash because when they run, they could see that flash. <laughs> yeah, and I'm that. like, oh, my God. Like, what? This is what it's come to? You got to think about that. So I, um, I mean, man, my heart goes out to the families and the victims and... You know, that's the other thing. They say, well, how many dead? Well, there's two dead, but how many shot? 15 altogether. Okay, two so 15 died. people get shot. This is what they say. Oh, 15 shot. Okay, but what you don't realize is that person might have lost their fucking hand. Yeah. Or the use of their leg for the rest of their... I'm yeah. shot and I'm alive, but also I lost a leg or I don't have... I have to wear a colostomy bag. I've got to breathe through a... Who knows what just, you know... Shot counts, man. Not Shots. to mention the psychological damage yeah. that they're gonna have for the rest. I had a buddy who was actually in the bathroom. That the kid, the kid started the shooting in the bathroom and then brought Not it out the into the hallway. bathroom. Yeah, he was in there. That's where the first and uh, and uh, the first kid died was going to the bathroom, walked up behind him, shot him, killed him. That's where the shooting took place. Nothing racially motivated, bullying, no. none of that. Just uh, mental illness. Clearly, sure. he's laughing and shit. You said smiling. Trying to fit in with the with the wrong crowd is from what I've gathered. That's it. And that was the way and, and I'll get to that in a second about why I think it was that. My friend was using the urinal, happened to know the shooter. You knew the guy that got shot? Yeah, we were good friends. We played basketball oh. together, baseball. We were on, you know, sports. Came up behind him going to the bathroom and you know, using the urinal, shot him in the neck and left him there to die. He goes out in the hallway to start shooting. That's when I come around the corner, I guess. Or this might have been just before I come around the corner. The kid's crying or moaning on the floor. Oh, oh. He turns around, tells him to shut up, goes back to shooting kids in the hallway. <laughs> it's just that that's how brutal this kid was. Just the, Your friend? He told my friend to shut up who was moaning and on the died, ground. he He bled out? No, he lived, actually. He did? Yes, he lived. After being shot in the neck? In the neck, yeah. And it Holy was fuck. Out for months after that, 
came back with you know giant brace on his head and you could see the the bullet hole in his neck or the entrance that it took they should put him next to the coke machine like, what's up man <laughs> <laughs> what's Good up man selfie. who wore it better <laughs> I'm going as this Coke machine for Halloween, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> that was, if I could have... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but my good God. news for that, he, he's... I haven't heard from him in, you know, 20 years, but uh, last I heard, he was he had a kid on the way, and he was All married, right, so he's doing fine. And he, did you know any other people close I to him? I knew another shot? kid got shot in, in the lip. Uh, I remember we grew up together. It was somehow it entered the side. Yeah, it went across his Fuck. lip. So he came back with just his giant lip. Or gi yeah, just did it blow teeth the lip. out or anything? Don't remember blowing teeth out. No. It was just a, it got lucky. Yeah. Man, just lucky. Across your face. Yeah, somehow in through here and out that through here. blew his jaw. Exactly. I mean, inches. Holy fuck. Fuck. And he, his and that buddy, was just from running, like just these are he was stray running. bullets flying through. Yeah, that's the other thing you don't think about. This guy's just spraying. You don't think about ricochet, like uh -huh. this shit could bounce here and shoot over that way. Yeah. Someone made it home. Now this is a rumor, but it, it was a lot of people had had told me about this. Someone made it home, didn't realize they were shot in the leg until they got home. Adrenaline. And right, everything. the adrenaline. And so I do. You do know a couple of the kids that got shot. One, none of them. I didn't know the kids that died. So how did how did he get them? One kid was in the bathroom with my friend, uh, and he just shot him in the head. That kid died instantly in the bathroom. The other kid was I mean, in the can hallway. You imagine you're just going to the bathroom and then your lights go out. That's it. That's it. I think you about those kids. You don't even know what's going on. Uh -uh. I Never think about them coming. all the time. I'll all bet. the time. He's, and, and I do have some PTSD from it. Like I don't like to be. For a long time, I couldn't go into schools that were indoors. I just couldn't do it. Man. I got up so many questions. How do you feel when the store's packed? Every yeah, room in there. Very like, un back's always to a wall. Because that shooting happened on the uh -huh. on the. Were you there that night? No, I wasn't there okay. that night. Yeah. But I heard that guy that was in the two school shootings was there that night. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the legend continues. <laughs> he just happened to have tickets. <laughs> I think we just. <laughs> Man, I appreciate you helping me find humor in this because this is crazy. No, I mean, there's funny this parts that are looking back on it. You know, it's a sad situation, but you gotta laugh at it, dude. You know? It's funny seeing people, at, uh, the, that class get older and older and seeing them develop families and. Yeah, I mean, uh, reunions. Of, all right, wait, well, let's go back. Let's go okay. back. All right, so someone if, in the lip. Can I just apologize? I know I'm going very fast. You don't it, owe any apologies. But it's uh, it's coming back to me, and I'm trying to get everything out. So if you're having a hard time following, I'm not. Okay, I'm not. We can all go right. wherever you want to go. I'll all right. reset us, and we can go again. Okay, it's okay. all good. Be yourself, please. Um, I want you to be, and I couldn't. There's, I mean, I hope there's not a lot of people out there that can, you know, understand exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But unfortunately, there probably are. So. Um, I do have a friend. Well, Dan Van Kirk's friend was involved in the Vegas shooting. Oh. Um, and a friend of mine, her daughter was in there, and she had just left. So I've talked to some people about this crazy shit, but yeah. I've never sat with someone and talked about a school shooting. I mean, that's the other thing. I'll never forget hearing this Columbine parent say, you know, someone said to them, wrong place, right, wrong time. And she said, bullshit. My kid was in school. They were exactly where they were supposed to be that fucking day uh -huh. don't tell me wrong place wrong time and i thought you know what fuck yeah yeah that's bullshit wrong place wrong time that's where they were supposed to be that day so um going back to someone getting shot the the people who died you said the one boy and who was the other person the other one i believe was shot in the hall he was shot but was able to run around the corner so, as I mentioned earlier, I was at the end of the hall. I was on the left side of the hall. He ran around the right side of the hall, and apparently he collapsed right there. A teacher came out, performed CPR, and he died in the teacher's arms. The teacher had, the teacher was at the, he had been there. He was like, you know, 20 some odd years. I just, I think he, later on I learned he had like six shrinks after this. He just couldn't get over it. The kid died in his arms, and I, mean, I don't think he ever recovered. I don't know how you could. Uh-uh. So that's where the second kid, uh, that was, uh, Rand so Randy Gordon, who was a senior, and I believe Brian Zucker, was a, he was a freshman who wanted to be a stunt double, which was funny because I remember hearing rumors about this freshman who, if you gave him a dollar, he would run into a pool head first. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we would bring dollars and try, you know, have him run into pools. <laughs> 
<laughs> Holy shit. So just great, you know, two of the most innocent kids at yeah. that school, you know. Everyone's innocent. Oh, yeah. They're all yeah, innocent. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, yeah. in school. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, do you know who the worst, the person who, that survived the worst damage? Probably anyone in a friend. wheelchair? Um, anyone? I don't remember anybody being in a wheelchair. I think my buddy who got shot in the neck was the worst one that I can remember. Yeah, but he's recovered now. He recovered, yeah. Everybody I know had a full recovery. I knew another guy shot in the butt. He, yeah, he recovered. That's probably the best place you could get shot, right? I don't yeah, know. I would say it's the fleshiest and muscle. Somebody else got, uh, the kid who got shot through the lip, he had a friend who got shot. And I don't remember where, but I know he got uh, honorably discharged after going to the army when he graduated due to complications to his gunshot. So wow. there was that. Okay. And I mean, as far as things that follow you from that, like I can't, if I go to a busy restaurant, you better believe my back's against the wall. I want to see everybody that comes in. That's that old mafia shit. Yeah. yeah. And I still, if I go to the bathroom and somebody walks in behind me, I'm like, oh, you know, I got to kind of keep an eye. I just, I, you just never know. You never I know. I did a gig. Have you ever done, have you ever been to Chicago? No. I did a gig in Chicago and then they took me over to the Al Capone's old place called the Green Mill. And it's just, it's vintage. It's yeah. as if it's untouched, like 50s, 60s. It's just gorgeous. And I was like, you guys should do a show here. They go, we do every Sunday afternoon, and it's been sold out forever. And I was like, fuck yeah. And it's gorgeous. And they go, that's Capone's seat over there. So we go sit in the booth. And then as soon as you sit in the booth, you can see why it's his booth. Okay. He's got an exit right behind him, but he can see everything. It's not even facing front. It's facing, it's in the middle. So he's got his right and his left, but nothing behind him but a door. And it's this beautiful booth. And you're like, well, oh, that's the yeah, that's, we're out exactly. here. Exactly. Always we're know out. where the exits are, just in case, you know. So can we talk? Let's go to this. I want to try to stay chronologically now. So you meet with this group of people at the school. I'm sure rumors are flying. Everyone's you hear who it is. Uh, we talk about the people, I'm sure, who die. What's next? How long is school closed? Like, when do you actually go back? And what are you doing in that time? One thing I want to point out in the parking lot that was a trip, man, was so, so the whole school was pretty much there in the parking lot. Parents are showing up because they're being reunited. And if you, you can Google all this. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's all, it's all documented. It's on the, you can find it on, on Google if you look it up. There's news footage and everything. You can see them gathering in that area. Parents were coming to reunite with their kids. Unfortunately, some of the parents came, found out that their kids were no longer alive. That's really sad. And you see that? I didn't see that, no. The shooter's dad comes looking for his son. Hey, is he okay? I don't want to say his name. Is he okay? Asking his friends who he saw, like, oh no, I think he did it. Imagine, <laughs> the dad goes there thinking that his son was, you know, a victim. A victim. He's the one that caused all this. So that happened in the parking lot. That was part of where everybody was reunited. After that, it was just, I don't remember too much in that day. It didn't hit me what happened until later that night. A radio station, a real popular radio station down there was talking about it. And I was like, wow, if this station's playing it, you know. And that's when Geraldo Rivera had, you know, come down. By then, all the big names were there. And you realized how massive it actually was. Yeah, I mean, my uh, God. What point do you all, uh, as a community, find out that this parent and these kids knew? I don't. I remember it being almost immediately. Yeah. Almost immediately, man. So, I know that there were some burnouts he was hanging out with, and he said he was gonna he was gonna shoot the school up. And this one kid specifically, I remember because I went to elementary school with him. Huge loser, right? I think he was already dropped out of high school by this time, and he told the kid who did the shooting, you're not going to do it, you're a pussy. Egging him on. Next day, he does it. No, no, no repercussions for him, by the way. I don't know what happened to him. I'm sure he's in prison, but for something else. But just, you know, escalated unnecessarily. So how long is school closed before you get to go back? Just one day. That's it? Yeah. You, get the fuck yeah, out of here. A one day. day. One day. How is it not closed for like two weeks, a month? That's what we thought. We thought, oh, we're going to be out of school for Fuck a long yeah. time. That was the rumor because, you know, we didn't want to go back to school crazy. anyway. Would you, who would want to? I'd be scared to go back the next day. Yeah, I don't think I'm it was sure mandatory. To, I, I was going to say, I'm sure the absentee rate that day was up. They, I know that I walked on campus the first day back. It you haven't was, even processed this No, yet. you really haven't, man. It's not. It's 24 hours later. You're back in the building where you mm -hmm. just almost got killed yourself, where people you know have been maimed and some have been murdered. Yes. And yeah. you're walking that same hallway and seeing these same bullets. Yeah, everybody's I mean, retracing Jesus their steps Christ. from that day. 
I remember walking on the campus, it was the quietest I've ever heard it. You know, everybody was there, but very few people talking. It was just really eerie. And then, you know, it was, we had uh, counselors in every class. So counselors came in and it was that way for a while. I forget how long, but they were there every day taking over the class. So we weren't learning. We were talking about what happened. And then they put, a, they put in like a makeshift building for campuses, for uh, counselors that were there the rest of the time I was in high school. I don't know how long they stayed, but. I'm sure the teachers, everyone, the faculty, yeah. everyone needed to talk with somebody after some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. The bathroom never reopened as long as I was there. They always kept it shut. You guys know there are all these gimmicks that promise a great night's sleep out there, right? I don't care what kind of toppers they are or how heavy a blanket may be. It's just lipstick on a pig. If you're sleeping on a terrible mattress, your sleep will be terrible. It's that simple. That's why I recommend sleeping on a purple mattress. That's because only purple mattresses have the gel flex grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. All right. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, thanks to the gel flex grid, purple mattresses bounce back as you move and shift. And you'll never have that I'm stuck feeling people get with memory foam. Purple sent me a pillow, same technology. And I'm a side sleeper. I love it. I, it readjusts. It doesn't like, you know, have a, a cave in it every time I put my face on. I don't have to lift it up in the middle of the night and fluff it and turn it over and everything. It keeps its shape. It's awesome. Try your purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns. Financing is available too. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash honeydew and use code honeydew for a limited time. You can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash honeydew, code honeydew, for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash honeydew, promo code honeydew, terms apply. You guys know I believe in mental health. This show has become a, a mental health show, to be honest. And I know a lot of people are embarrassed to go. I know a lot of people feel like I'm, it's not manly. It's not. Listen, man, all that's cr it's garbage. Get that out of your head right now, okay? Meeting with a the therapist to work on your mental health. It's just as helpful as hiring a personal trainer to work on your physical health. And the positive impact can be just as life-changing. Talkspace makes it possible to speak with a licensed therapist right from your phone, tablet, or computer. And unlike traditional therapy, you can message your therapist anytime via text, video, or voice. It's 100% secure and stigma-free the way therapy should be. At Talkspace, your privacy and security are their number one priority. The app puts you in a private room with just you and your therapist, and you can send messages 24-7 and get replies throughout the day. No need to wait for a weekly appointment. Talkspace's encryption and added security features keep your conversation fully protected. Join Talkspace today and start moving forward with a single message. Just visit Talkspace.com and you'll get $100 off your first month when you use the promo code HONEYDO at sign up. That's 100 bucks off at Talkspace.com promo code on it. do it for yourself today now let's get back to the day the day flags half mast what sort of yeah. any scholarships oh, in um, these kids names what do they do to remember these kids i don't remember that i do know that they, they had a bunch of vigils the community really got behind them they had churches where we'd have the memorials for them i remember going to the memorial they had a like a big big church Everybody went there for the memorial, and, and I lived close, so I walked. Walking home, I remember that was the first time I cried. I was going to answer. Yeah, it was the only time, the first time I cried. Why? What made you cry at that I moment? think just realizing how innocent the two kids were that died. I don't think I was so scared about myself. I think I was just, it was so sad that these, you know, the parents got up there and spoke about what they wanted to do. That one kid wanted to be a uh, stunt, stunt man. Yeah, and the other kid wanted to go into the, the army, and his grandpa was so proud of him because he was going to be a captain or go further than he actually did and just hearing the stories real you know putting because i didn't know him personally putting you know personality to these actual people you know these were actual kids that lived and now that and i still think about them to this day thinking you know they all this all this they've missed all this for nothing for nothing absolutely and they nothing. were where they were supposed to be that yeah day. they weren't even fucking fucking off or out doing illegals they were no. in school doing nothing wrong i would say two of the most innocent kids at the school i mean they were just you know they weren't jerks Everybody I knew had nothing but kind things to say about these kids. So tell me about two weeks later what happens. How does that happen two weeks later? 
That is it's was kids saying, is he is this shooter involved with your shooter or in that circle no, of people? No, just it was the is type of copycat, copycat crimes, which were that was a new term at the time. Yeah. I remember a copycat crime, and that's exactly what it was. I think it was so close to home, and I don't know. I, I mean, it was everywhere. You couldn't get away from it. So within the whole San Diego area, I'm guessing he, he was he had problems too. He ended up killing himself in prison. So that, I don't that know what happened to him. Yeah. How many people died in that? I one? don't think anybody died All at good. Granite. Actually, nobody died at Granite Hills. I know he shot some kids, but none of them died. Luckily. Okay. So um, can we shift a little bit to? Well, tell me a little more. Like you had a full year to go after that. Did, yeah. You did know it what? Feel normal after that ever again? It got back to can normal. It, Everything it went back to normal. Like I said, there was a lot of fighting going on beforehand for a while. I'd say a week or so. You know, everybody was sympathetic towards everybody in these, and then it just went back to normal. You know, you forget and move fast. on. Yeah, real fast. Maybe longer than a week, a couple of weeks, but at least a couple months. I don't remember being an issue. What month towards was the it again? I'm sorry. I think it was February. So pretty much couple months and then boom it's back to normal and then you get out and then your summer hits yeah and uh-huh. then you just go back the next year and yeah i don't remember any difference you know I, not a lot of kids transfer shit you no. where, where are you going to transfer the other schools getting shot up too yeah exactly well, no going? one was safe yeah i'll never forget the yearbook that came out that year they were selling ebay was still new they were selling them on ebay because the shooter and one of the fr- the shooter was a freshman and one of the kids he killed was a freshman and they were on the same page in the yearbook. Yeah. He never took his picture out. Yeah, so that people were bidding for that on eBay. Unbelievable. That? Unbelievable. Yeah, I still have that yearbook, man. You do. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've I don't, actually don't think I've looked at it since since then, but I know I still have it. Okay, so um, tell me about without naming this piece of shit. Tell me about this guy now. You say he goes to prison. And like, how? Why do you guys do you get updates on this person? Yeah, that something because you can San Diego used to cover. It. San Diego used to cover it in their in the Union Tribune, which is the paper out there. So you were always getting updates, like, hey, he's appealing his case. Hey, he wants to go up. Hey, here's what it looks like now. Because he was, he was a freshman. He was small, and he grew. I don't know. He's really tall now. Really big guy. To me, he looks like a monster. He looks like an absolute monster now. Look at look at him for yourself. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> but I think he looks like a monster. Anyway, he was a small kid. And they think that's why he was, that's what everybody, the news was pushing it as, hey, he did it because he's a small kid. Well, also, guess what? You didn't do this for racially motivated no. or bullying or anything. You did it to be with the, the people you wanted to run with. And yeah. those people are in prison. Why do you yeah. want to get out? Stay there. Yeah. You put yourself exactly where you want to be, you motherfucker. You're with now the buddies you get to now. Stay. You're with the uh-huh. homies. Stay there, motherfucker. Well, I, I don't Sorry. know much about him other than he grew within that first year. That was the big story. He's like, look, he's so much bigger now. And, you know, right, here's what he would have been. Prison roids. I'm and sure. All that shit. Yeah. All I know is that he came from somewhere on the East Coast from a small town, and then came to our city, and it was he had trouble fitting in. That's all I know. Other than that, his mom was on the East Coast. His dad moved out here, and he lived with his dad. There's actually footage that they have where he filmed something on a camera, and he was going through his apartment before the school shooting, and he. And he pans across the his dad's gun cabinet and he goes oh there's the no-no cabinet it keeps going so that's one of the reasons that the dad didn't go to jail because he has proof that the guns were locked up so it's just and weird he to educated see. his son that you don't touch those yeah i guess and then a couple months later because the video was only a few months old you know, it surfaces around. That's when he did the shooting. But you can so see the gun in He's that He's a video. minor, so yeah. So his father yeah. could go to prison, huh? Because it was his dad's twenty-two. Yeah, it was his dad's gun. Luckily, and by the way, luckily it was a twenty-two. You're right, and not a fucking uh, AR or something. Jeez, ripped yeah. That whole, well, you're right. I'm thinking about man. You made such a great point about cattle. Literally just packed in these hallways. And That's if there's all it somebody is, there, they don't need to aim. You're right. No. They can just spray into that fucking crowd without even making it personal. And that's all he was doing, man. I'll never insane. forget how loud that was in the hallway. There's an echo in the hallway. Just because so, if you go to a gun range and you shoot indoors, it's loud. It is very. But if loud. you go in a, a hallway that's just enclosed like that, I mean, I've never heard anything that loud. It was unbelievable. And, um,. Do honest to God, I want to ask you this because firecrackers sound a lot on Fourth of July. Do yeah. you ever? Does it ever trigger you at all? No, firecrackers don't normally. No. I know that that's what a lot of people thought it was at first. I'm sure, yeah. Those firecrackers it does sound similar. Because you don't process it's going to be a shooting. No, yeah, it's that's the first thing that comes to your mind, especially at a school. Especially also back then. Yeah. You know, back then. Nowadays, maybe they're. I know they have new drills and yeah. shit I never had when I. So that one, I want to ask you: Were there any? 
new safety precautions put in, uh, new drills, new anything that you had to go through after this? No, not that I remember. No drills. No new drills other than that. It was it was pushed to be you know, security kind wasn't of, beefed up. Yeah, no they did have some security. We did have yeah, we had more police on campus. They also had weapons now. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they went with and more guns. police. I remember more police presence, and then how did you feel about went. more police presence? Oh, we were all for it. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, to me, I felt safer at that time. We all did. Did the students have a say? No. No. Uh. -uh. It's funny because you get these school shootings now when people are all over the news or all over social media. We just had a short window to get our voice out there and then it was gone. Right. You know, it's just crazy. I, I think that's why people forget about it. We didn't have social media to really keep it going and keep right. everything alive. Yeah, the internet at that point was five, six years ago. Yeah. Um, so you told me before we started recording that you um, started doing an after school, um, was it after school program? Yeah, it was at an after school program. After you graduated. Yeah, after I graduated, so it was, I was interesting probably to me 26. That you, you stayed in sort of the school system. Yeah, I never thought about that, but I was in. So this after school program was for the elementary school. Elementary still in the same school district that the high school was in. I worked this after school program, and I hear whispers that there's a girl there. At, I work on this. I was subbing in these different places. I was just kind of using it for extra money, and I had a long term sub at a specific school, and I'm hearing rumors that a girl who works there is dating the killer who's in prison right now. She's dating him in prison. From prison? From prison. Like a new relationship since he's been in there, meaning post-murder. Right. Meaning she knew everything about him. And decided to date the guy. Yeah. And now she's working? How's that, as I'm saying, how's that not a conflict of interest? I I don't know. In the same school district. And I was nervous. Yes. And I was nervous because I was thinking, what is she going to say, man? I'm going to lose it on her. I'm going to absolutely lose it on her. I'm going to do something stupid. How do you, you know, work with her? Lose my job. She never brought it up. And I think that's why. I, I despised looking at her. I, I didn't, I would never talk to her. I wouldn't, you know, um, but I, people were telling me before I went there or as I was there that, hey, you know, that's his girlfriend. And uh, I've heard, her, my brother told me, my brother actually worked there. He was telling me that she would go around saying, I'm so excited. This weekend I get to go see my boyfriend. D what? <laughs> yeah. And that's what bothered me more than anything because I think if I hear that, I don't know what I'm going to say back to her. And I need this job. Yeah, that, was one, of the, on that, that was one of the worst. I would say that's one of the worst. Go, that was one of the worst things going through after the school shooting because it just, it just brought up so much, so much pain. And then knowing that this girl was okay because I, to me, yeah. the guy's dead. I, I could care less. Shit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand people like that. So can you talk to me about some of the traumas you've uh, suffered from this and what you maybe still deal with? Definitely, uh, I would say crowds of people bother me. Like just, what, uh, where are you, where are we talking about? Like, like a Coachella? Yeah, yeah Coachella bother, anything, concerts bother me. Uh, anywhere where there's not a clear exit. So I know if we're going to get, if we try to escape, there's going to be a bunch of people going that same direction. I don't like using public restrooms. I do, but I don't like using public restrooms. Uh, the urinals, when people, I can hear people behind me, that bothers me. If I'm in a restaurant, my back's against the wall. Things like that. So it does stay. And for a while, I, I didn't like, I couldn't go into an enclosed school. So if really? we had an indoor school, I, I had a hard time walking through those hallways. And a few times I had to for whatever reason. Yeah, because the outdoor schools, and like, they were new to me. We didn't, we weren't even allowed outside. Oh, okay. You know, we had harsh winters and shit too, Maryland, but you didn't get to go outside. You just went through the hall to your next class and stuff. There was no hanging outside um, until after school with like sports and shit like that. But right. You didn't get to, but like literally there was no way to, you had to exit a door to get out of the building where I walk my kids campuses and you can just fucking run right over there and be out yeah. by somewhere else. You know, I think if I were a parent, I would look for that. I would want there to be an outside campus, just yeah. more ways to get out. Cause I can't imagine what it would have looked like had he been indoors. And you know, there's only one or two exits. Luckily there was throughout the campus, you could find ways out. And I think that's, that helped other than, uh, other than there only being one shooter and him not following, staying in that one area. I guess when he got, I meant to bring this up earlier, but when the cops got there, he threw his gun down and he put his hands out the window and said, oh, it's, it's just me. Out the window of the school? Or, sorry, not out the window, out the door. Oh. Out the door of the bathroom. So it's just me, meaning I'm the and, only shooter? Yeah, put okay. a, meaning, I don't know how or he meant dear it. Dear old, just little just, old little me. Little old me is how yeah, I took it. Okay. It's, just, it's just me. I don't think he even thought about 
what he had done. You know what I mean? And later, there was news footage of him later that night being taken into custody, and that's the only time I saw him cry. So I know he wasn't crying at, you know, when he was arrested. Jesus Christ. Um, okay, I want to ask you this, because you stayed sort of teaching for a little while. Uh-huh. Um, where do you stand on Second Amendment? Are you a gun owner? I am. Yes, you I are. am a gun owner. I'm for it. Were, just... you, were you and your family prior to the school shooting? No. No, would, do, you think with, guns. do you think without the school shooting you would? I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's definitely, I know how helpless you can feel in a situation like that. And after that, I knew I wanted something. I just never wanted to feel that helpless again if I could help it. And then the only place I could do that was in my own home. And I don't want, you know, I figured I've always felt safer. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. I mean, yeah. I grew my father grew up hunting, um, so we had guns in the house. But again, we were taught gun safety, you know. Yeah. Every gun's loaded. The safety's always off, but make sure you put it on. But when you pick it up, don't fucking aim it at your – don't look down it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like honest to God, simple shit that you're some responsible for everything yes. that comes out of that gun. Everything. It's but it's – I mean, I get both sides.